archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. We welcome you to our program. Welcome to Studio One. It's a great pleasure indeed to have you, Sushma ji, in the studios. And uh, I have admired you as an actress, both on stage and on screen, for such a long time. Thank you so much, Sunit. It's an honor for me to be here too. Yeah. You know, I remember the first time I saw you on stage, I was so struck by your acting. And this was sometime in the mid 70s, I think. And this was a play called Kisi Ek Kool Ka Naam Lo. Yes. yes, at the India International Center. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have any memories of that play? I just remember that we did this. Now, who the author was, I cannot recall. And uh, I just remember that it was on the IISC <laughs> right. stage. I can, that's, that's entirely understandable because you have done so many plays, films, television serials that it's impossible to keep track of all that you have done in this. You hit on the one that I cannot recall. <laughs> Most of the others I can recall. <laughs> so let's start with your early background because you come from an old Delhi family. Yes. And uh, obviously I think uh, the arts, music, uh, painting, theatre were very much part of your family background, yes. weren't they? Yes. Uh, our family was very progressive in the sense that all the ladies were permitted to perform uh, in radio plays. Uh, they learned dance and performed on stage, learned classical music. And uh, initially, I also learned classical vocal Indian music. But later, my uh, focus and my passion shifted to the theater. And I did plays. But even at that time, I did a lot of plays. Uh, I used to read books and get the, since I was the eldest of the siblings, mm. I would get all my younger uh, family children together, put up a stage and have them perform. And uh, my uncle, Mr. Maheshwar Dayal, wrote three plays in which I acted. One was when uh, performed at the, on the regal stage mm -hmm. called Ye Dilli Hai. And this is when I must have been about seven or eight. Then one was where I played a 70-year-old Nawab. Mm. It was called <laughs> Bardi Khawa. It was in Urdu. Oh. And uh, then one other you for must a have family been a, wedding. Uh, less than a teenager when he played the 70-year-old <laughs> yes, Nawab. Yes. <laughs> and then one was uh, for a family wedding called Tai, in which there was a Haryanvi accent. Which you had to master. Which, uh, yes, which I later used in Ham Hamlog. Also, yeah, in also. your famous role yes. as the Dadi in Hamlog. That's yes. right. No, but we are running ahead of ourselves. What uh, made you shift from an early interest and training in uh, Indian classical vocal music to theatre? What sparked off your interest in theatre? You know, uh, I had always been interested in acting and I had been uh, performing, but in school there wasn't any opportunity at all. But when I got the scholarship This was the Convent of Jesus and Mary yes, in Delhi? Yes. 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 Uh, they didn't do any plays there. Mm. And uh, even in college, I was part of the dramatic society, but I didn't perform on stage at all. Mm. I was uh, entered in music competitions. Mm. So uh, when I went, got the scholarship to go to America, to Briarcliff College, and I found that you could study theatre and drama as a subject with all the varied facets of uh, costume, makers, makeup, set design, history of the theatre, various um, elements of the theatre. Then I naturally opted for that and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had carried my Tanpura with me, mm. but uh, it was just used uh, for various things. But uh, I just to got totally committed to theatre. One interesting uh, bit of uh, sort of information that I gathered while going through websites was that you were crowned May Queen <laughs> while you were in Briarcliff <laughs> yes. College. That's quite a signal honor in American colleges, isn't it? I was also president of the student council mm. and uh, they had a May festival mm. and whoever had contributed a great deal, then uh, they, that person was crowned May Queen apart from having won the all round excellence. It must be unusual for an Indian uh, young girl to be crowned May Queen I in know. the United States in those days. And I wore a sari <laughs> and a wreath. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So your real passion for theatre or involvement with theatre actually commenced when you act when started studying it? Uh, no, it started earlier, hmm. but when I was studying it then it 
totally, it absorbed me totally. Mm. Because uh, in America also, I did a lot of plays at Briarcliff. Mm. And uh, I also uh, toured with a uh, company. Mm. And um, I played Murjina in Alibaba for mm. a children's play. Mm. And uh, then I thought that I'm happiest on the stage uh, mm. acting. Mm. So I came back and uh, when I came back, I acted with all the theatre groups in Delhi. Oh. And it was uh, with uh, long stint. You became a founder member of a of group Yatrik. which is now 50 years old, which is Yatrik. This is Tell us about the early days of uh, starting a theatre group like Yatrik. We had all travelled together with the USIS. Mm. They formed a theatre company because they wanted to bring two plays, Abe Lincoln in Illinois and uh, Our Town, to, 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 to the Indian audiences and colleges and schools. And uh, they were looking for uh, uh, Indian actors who could speak English and perform in English. And Roshan, Nigam, Joy. Roshan Say, Seth, Nigam yes. Prakash, yes. Joy Michael. Uh, Marcus Merch. Marcus All Merch. of us, we were cast in these two plays and we traveled with them to all the cities, major cities in India. And uh, since it was a USIS project, for us, uh, and all the boys were in studying, uh, were students. For us, it was a very comfortable existence because we traveled in comfort, stayed in comfort and performed, which mm. was a passion for all of us. Mm. So uh, when we returned after the last show somewhere, then we all decided that let's, we enjoy this so much, we love it. It was a passion for all of us that let's not disband, let's form a repertory company. Mm. And uh, we will perform every weekend and we will rehearse the plays and uh, give Delhi uh, plays in English, Hindi, Urdu. Mm. So that's how Yatrik was formed and Nigam Prakash, we all uh, suggested names and uh, Nigam said uh, Yatrik, so we all said yes, that sounds very good. Mm. Traveling theatre people. Well, I mean Yatrik has Yatra. really been... Uh, it traveled a long way since then. And you it's also performed in a lot of Yatrik. A lot of Yatrik plays. I'm presently director of Yatrik. Yes, so that too. <laughs> uh, yeah. that too. Right. So yes, it's been something that has bound a lot of theatre people together. And many yes. of the theatre people have gone into television, into cinema, and there are big names now, like yourself. Um, I wanted to ask you now about theatre in Delhi in those days, we're talking about the 60s, 70s and 80s. What was the scene like at that time? How many companies were there? What were the audiences like? There were a lot of theatre groups which had come up at that time. There was Abhyan, which is Rajendranath's mm -hmm. uh, group. There was Dashantar, which was Om uh, Shivpuri. And, and there was Natyadvai, which was Sai Paranjpi and Arun's group. And Little Theatre Group was there, Unity Theatre was there, which was the precursor to, um, which was earlier Joy's. Mm. And uh, then we formed Yatrik. So they, all these people were very uh, excellent theatre people, very good performers, very good actors, and with the same passion and same dedication and devotion. Uh, and uh, their expertise was professional. But uh, the only thing that was not professional is was that they could not ha have earn a livelihood mm -hmm. by doing theatre, which uh, was uh, very unfortunate because everyone then took morning jobs in schools or wherever they worked, and we rehearsed in the evenings and put on plays. As Yatrik, we did, uh, we performed every weekend, and initially at Mahadev Road Hall, which is very close by here. Which is now the Films Division Auditorium, yes. Mahadev Road. And then at the Batridden, uh, auditorium in the Pragati Maidan. Mm. We performed there and we would rehearse one play, read another script, choose our uh, f for our uh, playbill for the year and uh, be performing every weekend. And uh, the maximum I think uh, the plays ran were say about eight weekends if they were really well liked. Mm. We had to uh, we were suggesting that we should have a big, big magnet outside radio over there to draw recording. audiences. <laughs> that has always been a problem to draw audiences yes. and uh, to be able to meet our costs. That's right. So that economic uh, problem was there always.
And it still and persists. It still with persists because uh, unless it's uh, subsidized or it's uh, a government uh, initiative, the theatre people cannot earn a livelihood by doing theatre. Mm. But despite, despite that, all of you were so dedicated and yes. all of you worked with each other as well. I mean, the, the, the groups are somewhat interchangeable, I know, because yes. many of these people have done... I worked for all these theatre groups. All of them. And they, many of those people also worked with the Atrik and with other groups so. as well. Very so there was a camaraderie yes, amongst the various groups, um, which still, I think, to a certain extent persists. But the audiences were different. Uh, uh, Abhyan has it, had its own audience, mm. Dishantar had its own audience, we had our own audience. Uh, those same uh, people didn't go to see the other group's uh, performances see. for some reason. Mm -hmm. right. Which now we find it's beautiful because of the um, National School of Drama's festivals and the Meta festivals. There's a regular theatre going audience. Go, yeah. Yes, and they, they go and watch they plays watch irrespective plays. of yes. uh, right. loyalties to particular groups. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you remember some of the special plays and roles of that period? I can remember my own yes. primarily. Which, which were the ones that you <laughs> liked? <laughs> uh, I did uh, Shantin uh, Brest, Good Woman Good of Setswan with Habib Tanvir. Mm. I did Gurdafrid with Habib Tanvir. That my, was my first play in Rustam Sohrab mm. on the Delhi stage. And uh, I did Kate Katrina mm. in Taming of the Shrew, mm. for uh, which Hab again Habib directed. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I did uh, Rano in Ek Chadar Melisi, mm -hmm. which Rajendranath directed. Then he also directed uh, two very nice plays, Hanush, mm -hmm. in which I was there, and Natak Pulampurka. Mm -hmm. These were the ones. And uh, some excellent roles came my way, Sabrina in Sabrina Fair. Then there was a very nice play called Moon on a Rainbow Shawl, mm. which was uh, of the mulattoes in the Caribbean. And mm. it was a lovely experience. All these plays were just beautiful. Any particular favorite role? From all these that I mentioned, all, all they of were them. all very favorite. <laughs> all of them were. So uh, with a sort of a very hectic theatrical life, when did television happen to you for the first time? Television happened because it had started here in 1960. Mm. That's the year I returned. Mm. And uh, uh, right away they were doing plays and I got uh, involved with them. Unfortunately, they have no archival material at all. And there were some excellent plays directed by Mr. Prashant Pandey, Mr. F.C. Mathur, various very good directors of Doodashan. Hmm. But there's uh, no archival material. So, a lot so of that started right then. So you were so doing I was, I stage plays doing as, well as, as well as television, television plays. Yes. But uh, the real sort of spotlight on you uh, as a television actress, I think, came with Hamlog. With Hamlog, yes. which was legendary. And your role as the dadi in that, that was absolutely completely uh, took the country by storm and you were so well loved in that particular role you shone. So uh, what memories do you have of that particular period in your life? It was the first soap and I think it addressed so many of the issues of the middle class and the characters belong to every family. Mr. Manohasham Joshi wrote the characters so beautifully that all those members were like uh, members of their family, everybody who watched. Mm -hmm. And being the first soap, it was almost a ritual in every household that they sat down in front of the television to watch that hamlog, whether it was uh, uh, telecast twice in a week or three times in a week. And uh, there were wedding functions or whatever functions had to be scheduled. They said, no, no, not on that particular day because that day uh, there's a performance of Hamlog on Doodashan, so it was shift to another day. You know, it became that popular. Mm -hmm. It was the first soap That's and a right. continuity of very likable, very varied characters who they could all identify with. And uh, I loved doing that role. Uh, very much. You were much younger than the character. Yes, yes. And uh, I was. you d still decided to play this very deglamorized older woman. Yes. Why was that? You know, when uh, Mr. P. Kumar, who was the director, mm. when uh, he called me, he had come to Delhi after a very long time and he had done initially plays with me on Durdashan. So he came and uh, he spoke to me. He said, he said, I'm starting a soap soap opera and I want to cast you in a play so come when over and meet me at uh, Himachal Bhavan. So uh, when I went there he said, Are you can't do that. 
I had thought of you as a daddy, but you don't look that part. <laughs> I said, let me <laughs> read the script. You're too young for it. Yeah, absolutely. Let me read the script mm. and uh, I'll tell you. Mm. When I read that first copy of the script and the character analysis of all those, I just fell in love with that character of daddy. Uh -huh. And I said, this is the only one I want to do. <laughs> and you leave my makeup and my hairdo and my uh, costume to I will design it and I will execute it. Mm -hmm. I will get ready and come and show you. Mm -hmm. And I did. I called uh, my Bombay uh, person. Mm -hmm. I had started doing some films before mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I called him up and I said, I want this kind of a wig. And uh, he sent it here and I wore that. I pulled out my mother's old uh, trunks and pulled out some old fashioned jumpers of hers mm -hmm. and bought the saris and I got ready and uh, I said, here I am. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't believe it, that uh, <laughs> there could be that kind of transformation. And I thoroughly enjoyed doing that outlandish character, yeah. which was very uh, lovable also, very really likable. And it was great fun playing a role. Mm. I think that was uh, by far the most exciting role that I uh, have played. Well, hey, you've heard it from her yourself. Yes, uh, for somebody who's played more roles than anybody can recall, even she herself cannot recall how many roles she's played, to say that that was the most exciting role. That's it was, great because it was ambition. ongoing and uh, different situations and different circumstances and her attitude was so novel and unique. Mm. Uh, when, uh, particularly when that uh, grandson was going to Dubai or something, and uh, she said, he asked her, what do you want to do for me? She said, I don't want anything else, just give me a biscuit. So she said, what biscuit is from the pan? She said, no, no, that biscuit. She wanted a gold biscuit. <laughs> so, you know, things like that. <laughs> Mr. Maharshi Joshi wrote it so beautifully and all the different things that he had added to this character was such fun to play. And you got your Haryanvi accent back, which you had learned when you were a child. No, that I didn't recall, but he wrote the script in that manner. Mm. That later, after all those hundred and some episodes, uh, we could speak our own thoughts in that uh, accent. Mm, mm, mm. And we had become like a family. We would go there and uh, rehearse in, uh, during the daytime. And uh, the cameras would be set up and in the evening, Mr. Kumar would shoot it at one stretch. And Fantastic. he had his three cameras set up and he edited simultaneously. Uh, and we shot it like quick a Quick work. Very quick. What was it well, like one working? Day. With one day, one episode. Right, amazing. That must have been hectic, yes. the pace of it all. But an interesting thing was that your own daughter, Divya, Divya was, also was also playing uh, a role Manjali. Manjali. Yes, uh, in the in serial. How, what was it like working with family? Uh, I had, uh, before that, started a children's theatre. Mm. When my own children were very small, I thought, you know, uh, dramatic activity is the most spontaneous form of uh, interaction with where suppressed energies are released and all these children find so much creative expression. Mm. So uh, for one summer, I started a children's theatre workshop in our own place mm. and I invited all the neighbourhood children to participate mm and uh, join in and uh, Divya, Kavi, Priya, they were all part of this mm. and they were then seven, eight, nine mm -hmm. or six, seven, eight. Mm. So I was already working with them in uh, plays yes. and uh, our first uh, play was very successful and all the other children also, they just loved it and it became a, a biannual um, workshop kind of that we had would, which would end in a play yes. and uh, I did that for al almost about uh, 10 years right. and then s um, Mr. Karanth called me at mm. NSD and said why don't you do a workshop and start the children's theatre for us for the NSD, National, National School of Drama National School. and so I did the workshop with them and that's how th they the started. theatre and education started up yeah. thereafter I, you mentioned that you had already done some film work by the time you did the role in Hamlog. Now yes. that was you this started off. Two, uh, yes, you started off. I think with Sham Menegal's Junoon. Junoon. That was your first film. How yes. did that come your way, and uh, what were your feelings on stepping into the world of films after so much experience in theatre? You know, when uh, theatre people do only theatre, then they have no aspirations to go into films. So I was not really searching, uh -huh. but uh, Mr. Benegal had cast a lot of theatre actors 
you know, all his earlier films also. Mm. And uh, when he came to Delhi and he called me and he said uh, he wanted me to come and meet him. Mm. And, uh, and he talked about the script and he talked about the various characters. Mm. And um, I thought, well, everyone else said, why don't you do this mm. film? Let's see what the experience is like. Mm. It was so wonderful an experience with Mr. Shashi Kapoor as the producer and Jennifer mm. and Sham Benegal as the director and a whole lot of other theatre people in it mm. who were there. And uh, we shot in uh, Malihabad, which is near Lucknow. Mm. And uh, we were the state guests, it seemed, because there was as much work of uh, shooting that was going on Correspondingly, there were different menus of what they could offer us, which, which were special Malihabad, uh, like the Akodi Malihabad, kebabs and yeah. all those things. And also and the uh, mangoes. And the mangoes, of yes. Course. The Ameris <laughs> over there. So, um, it was such a wonderful experience and uh, right after its release, then uh, Raj Kapoor offered me Prem Rog. Mm. Yash uh, offered me Silsila, offered me Swami Dada and one other. Four films came simultaneously mm, mm. and I had enjoyed the whole uh, process and uh, what was very heartening was, you know, we had done so many plays mm. but uh, a very limited audience sees that and one film, the whole world sees it mm. and uh, even people who are known to you don't come and see your plays. And when they saw the f uh, film, they said, oh, you act? <laughs> <laughs> this is after years, years of doing hundreds of, of plays. plays. <laughs> yes. So I thought, well, that kind of exposure is all right. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like in the film? Because, I mean, you started off with Sham Benegal, who's a renowned, internationally renowned, award-winning yes. director. And then you stepped into the fray of the t uh, complete Bollywood commercial cinema as well, because yes, they accepted you with open arms. Because these these filmmakers were such excellent uh, directors and total, uh, who knew all aspects of filmmaking. Mr. Raj Kapoor just breathed and talked of nothing else but the film that he was directing right then. Mm. And he knew of every angle, every facet, and he uh, got uh, beautiful performances from all this his artists all and gave them the credit. Mm. Mm. And uh, so uh, all, all these experiences with these people was, were very good. And what was it like surviving the sort of uh, commercial side of Bollywood because a lot of people say that it's not a very nice place to be at times. You know when you are seeking then it may not be a nice place mm. and uh, it becomes very unpalatable if you're desperate mm. but if things are coming to you being for you offered to choose to you. and they're offer being offered to you and I never moved to Bombay I stayed in Delhi and they called me if they wanted me for a role mm. so that already uh, sifted a whole lot of unpalatable things mm. and the process of going to anybody for a role mm. it cut all that out mm. and uh, when they called me then i would discuss the role on the phone with them mm. and uh, also decide you know what kind of uh, costume what kind of everything mm. and uh, went only for the shooting and return right after my last shot i would take a flight back because mm. my children were studying here in school my husband's work was here I never thought of moving to mm. Bombay. So, uh, Not even a half house or a pieda there or something like that? Uh, later, I kept a flat there because I went with just a purse with my bunch of keys and my all my uh, shooting equipment was already, my makeup and everything was already there mm. and clothes. I didn't have to pack and unpack. Mm. And so I did that for 30 years. 
That's a just with that bunch of keys, I went there in the morning of the shoot. Always took the first flights to be there on time before anyone else could arrive on the set mm. by way of uh, co-stars. Mm. And uh, took the last day of the shoot, I took the flight back. All right. So never stayed in Bombay beyond never stayed, the shoot. No. <laughs> didn't attend any parties, didn't attend any mahurats, didn't attend any um, whatever else goes on with that. Mm. Just did not. And those are the days when you didn't have to do a lot of film promotion either. Otherwise, nowadays you have to go around no, promoting uh, the film. No, for um, Junoon, I think I did go with all of them mm. because then they came to Delhi also and mm. in Bombay when we were editing or subsequently. But uh, I felt that I'm a housewife and a mother. I just have to be here for them. And I also gave no important dates like uh, their birthdays or their or our festivals or weddings in the family. I, somebody was looking after my work by then. Hmm. I said, these are the dates that I'm shooting in Delhi. Hmm. So <laughs> I would not give those dates at Those all. dates are not available. They're not available. <laughs> so, so now you've raised the topic yourself. This work-life balance, especially between two cities. Yes. And not two cities. Delhi and all over the world. Wherever, wherever you're we required shooting for shooting. all over India and abroad, abroad and everywhere. That's right. How did you manage it? Because you with know, three children growing yes, up, your husband yes, in Delhi, yes, and living and out of a suitcase most of the time for so many years, for yes. three decades. Uh, you have to have a lot of cooperation from and uh, approval from husband. And my mother was a tremendous support. She lived nearby. Mm. So she said, you just go ahead and do all this. Leave them with me. Mm. So, you know, from school they would go there mm. and then come back home and my husband would fetch and carry this and uh, all they the all adjusted, but very happily they adjusted and uh, for a husband never to complain and never to pass a comment saying, but you were never there. Mm. He never gave me that and he always came and saw all the plays and he was very happy and proud that I was doing plays and doing films and doing television. And uh, he was his own person, and very positive, optimistic, very wonderful supporter. So wonderful. Without that, a housewife or a married mm. woman cannot do as much as I was able to oh, do. So that's wonderful. You had a yes. wonderful home atmosphere. I had a lot of support system, yeah. yes.